the Counter-Attack playthrough series. We're playing Barbarossa, Kiev to Rostov, 1941. The scenario is Battle on the Sea of Azov. It's turn 52, or for the scenario it's the fifth turn. October 2nd and 3rd, second to last turn. We'll go ahead and start with the uh, strategic segment. Weather determination phase, it's fixed at dry. Then the uh, supply determination phase, I just give a quick glance over the map. Nothing's changed since last turn. Everyone's in supply. Uh, replacements phase, no replacements. Reinforcements and withdrawal phase. Well, there's quite a few reinforcements here. Lots of Germans. Now, one major error I've discovered is that when I was looking to see where these reinforcements come in, that on turn 50, the Germans should have lost two aircraft. Um, actually, three aircraft. Two JU-88s and a BF-109. They should have been withdrawn. So I missed that, so let's take care of that. That's a BF-109F. Come over to their flown box. There's the BF-109F, so I guess I'll, I'll just throw that down into the destroyed box since it's withdrawn. And then the... Uh, Two Ju-88. So this one and the one that's damaged. So definitely cheated a little because of that. But now um, there's another Ju-88 coming in as a reinforcement. So it goes to the flown box. I'm sorry, the uh, ready box. And then we have a bunch of Germans coming in. Here's another more of a blunder. I just wasn't really paying attention to where reinforcements come in. I thought, there's no way these Germans are going to come in anywhere, but where there already are Germans. However, it says they come in on the north edge. Hex is 4801 to 5501. Let's go see where that is. So there's Melitopol. So the north edge is right there, east of the river. So they're going to be coming pouring down here. And that kind of makes sense to me. I was wondering, like, why is this scenario I have all this stuff out here? But, you know, everything's happening down here. So that's a major blunder. But um, at the same time, all those garrison units, um, those markers on them, the yellow markers, those will be released. So it's going to be some interesting stuff going on this turn. I'll go ahead and place the uh, units. Okay, so I've gone ahead and placed the uh, two Panzer divisions. Uh, I think they're both Panzer divisions, yeah. Up there, so it's east of the river. And uh, they each had some, you know, core assets as well. Uh, I kind of went ahead and stacked with them, so it's going to be some serious hurt coming down this way. All right, so that's the uh, reinforcement phase. The readiness phase. Let's go ahead and get these uh, flown guys into the ready box if we can. JU-87. He's, I rolled a 1. HE-111. It's a 4. Last guy. It's a 9. It stays there. And the Soviets. The IL-2. Got a 3. Yak. Nine, PE two, two, SB one. All right. Okay. Axis air interdiction phase. There are no Soviet fighters available, so um, I'll just go ahead and do these face up. We're gonna throw one here. Interdict that headquarters. Go ahead and throw. Um, this JU-88 here, and then, um, I don't know, might as well interdict the other headquarters, which I think was, let's see, in here, no, here, yeah, so uh, put the JU-87 there, let's go ahead and roll that JU-87 into air, add one for the headquarters, that is an 8. Um, that's eight with, I rolled seven, so it's eight with the plus one for the headquarters. It's also firing on a JU-87, so that's minus one, so it's back to seven. 
that guy's made it in. Okay, um, that means we need to mark this as interdicted with interdiction level two because this guy has a two. And he goes back to the phone box. Uh, the other guys, um, anti-aircraft fire for the JU-88. Got a five, nothing. The other guy, a two, nothing. So they are each contribute one. They go back to the phone box. So one plus one is two, of course. Interdiction level two. So um, interdiction level two suppresses this by two. So this headquarters is fully suppressed. So is the other one that was up there. Okay, axis player segment. We start with the axis movement phase. So it's starting to get pretty tense here. The uh, last turn, the Axis made an attack here. They actually did that two turns in a row. Got mauled decently there. Um, Soviets making a big build up here for a, a push. They still have two manda mandated attacks to make. They need to capture a third minor victory location. Um, so in the south it's getting hectic, and then of course in the north it's going to be hectic with those German reinforcements. So um, first let's process the Germans here. Um, the most important thing is this massive Soviet built up here. Definitely something going on. Most likely going for this. Of course since I'm playing both sides I know that's what my thinking was, but um, if I was looking at this you know, from one side only, I would say, yep, they're going for that. So, uh, I can't let that fall. So in this game, when you're attacking, if your enemy has a zone of control, um, and they're in terrain, um, that you're allowed to move into, you must attack them if you're also attacking someone adjacent to them. So one thing the Germans can do, or the Axis, you can pour units into here and then pour additional units off to the side. That would soak off attacks from these guys on the side. So I think we're going to try to do that, but we're limited in our forces here. So I need to scrounge someone. Before I do that, let me bring someone up closer to the front from down here. This guy. Um, he can go five. So one, two three, four, five, but before I, you know, that'll be overstacked, so before I move him, I want to move someone out of there. Um, what do we have in here now? We have um, let's see, I need to move, I guess this cavalry can move out. So we'll send this cavalry half, one and a half, two and a half. Um, and then I'll throw this guy in here. Three and a half, four and a half, five and a half. What do we have here? I think I want this. This is pretty decent stack. I want to keep it here, I think. This guy here. He can move five. What do we got here? I think we're good here. He's going to go one. One and a half. Two and a half. Three and a half. Four and a half. I can't go here because there's an enemy zone of control, but I am planning on doing that hmm, later. I guess I can't do that right now though, can I? So maybe he'll come in to this spot. Um, what I'm talking about is there's going to be a motorized movement phase later, uh, but that guy wasn't motorized, so he can't get a second move. So I'll go in here and then this mountain infantry will um, depart now that his place has been taken. So this guy can go one, two, three. OK. 
Okay. So he went here. Still need to get some guys in here. This guy already moved. So if I move these guys out, there's going to be a gap in my line of a decent size, but maybe that's okay. I think we're going to move these Romanians in. They're going to go half, one and a half, two, three. So, okay, there's 10 stacking points, defense 14. Okay, that's good. And, and unfortunately, I, I need to put someone here to soak off this guy's attack. Maybe even someone here. What do we have? I don't know if you can see that. What do we have up here? We have 7 defense plus 5 minus 2 is 3 defense, so that's 10 defense. I'm reluctant to move those guys, but you know, I think we're just going to pile all these guys right here. Okay, I think that's all the moves I want to do down here in the south. You can see it's still wide open in here, but I don't think the Soviets have what it takes to push on that hex over there. They're doing to do the push right here. Okay, now way in the north where those Panzer divisions are coming on. First off, I should have moved this guy over here so we can come in on the road. So um, we'll go ahead and start with this guy. So he's going to move, and this is the first time I'm going to use an overrun, I believe. Um, so the stack of this Panzer Division is going to move here. It's going to cost 0.5 and then 1 for the zone of control, so 1.5. Their movement's 7. Um, there's also an artillery in there that's not moving with them. Let's just see what we have here. There's also a 9 in there, 9 movement. But uh, the slowest guy is 7, so, so 7, we spent 1.5. Then we're going to conduct an overrun. We just declare we're conducting an overrun. Um, we have to pay the movement cost to enter this terrain. That would be 0.5, so that'll be a total of 2 spent so far, so we'll have 5 left. We're going to compute the odds ratio here. So we have um, 12 attack strength, 2 defense strength, so that's 6 to 1. So let's go check out the overrun table. Let's see, where is this? Here's the overrun table. So, uh, six to one. We're going to do a die roll. And then we're going to compute some modifiers. If all the attackers are German and the odds ratio is five to one, I have to add two to the die roll, and um, the higher the number is bad. I can see 11, so overrun fails. Six to one, which is what we have. No effect, so if I had even more, it'd be better. Um, defender conditions, they're not applicable right now. So um, we're going to go ahead and roll. Rolled a two. Well, that's good. Uh, two, successful stack and overrun hex loses one step for the stack and is retreated to two hexes. Now the retreat is done by the attacker, which is very interesting. Most games, you don't do that. So um, this guy's going to lose a step, and he's just dead, so the retreat is moot. So let's get these guys stacked back up together. So they have five movement factors left, so they just cleared that area during movement. So that's nice flexibility there. And then we're going to go, so we went to two, three, four, so where were we here? That was two. So three, four, and what am I trying to do here? I'm trying to cruise down to that objective city there. What is that? I can't quite read it, or shove, or something like that. So um, let's check this again. So that was two to get here, or two to get here, three, four. Hmm, can't quite get there. Five, six, seven. Now the recon guy can go nine. Um, huh. You know, 
we'll go seven here. And the, we'll leave the recon guy stacked. Okay, so the other Panzer Division up here. Um, he might as well do an overrun as well. So he's going to go um, half. And I think there's a unit in here that somewhere. Ah, you know what? It comes with a, it's coming in with like an anti-tank unit. Um, not part of the division, but that's okay. It's mobile. It's got a seven move. So it'll cruise with this whole stack. So it looks like the attack strength is 15. We spent 0. 0.5 plus one for the zone of control, so 1.5. Declare overrun. We're not following the road, so that'd be one. It's gonna cost a total of 2.5 to do an overrun. It's 15 to one odds. That is going to be minus three on the die roll. Roll to three, so it's zero, lose a step dead. Okay, so you slide forward. So I said 2.5, right? So we'll go ahead and 3.5, 4.5, 5.5. I'll go pick that guy up. I dropped off by accident. 6.5. And then I can go another 0.5. I guess I'll... What do we have here? 6.5. Ooh, headquarters. Um, with no zone of control, seven. I'm just gonna cruise over there. Sorry for the horrible filming here. It's kind of at the extent of my reach over the table. Um, so I don't know if this is gonna be good. Um, these Panzer guys are sort of arriving a little too late, but they might be able to cause some mayhem and cruise through here and eventually take the city basically making it impossible for the Soviets to win um, through city control. So I think that's the extent of the German movement phase. Okay, now for the Axis attack declaration phase. Uh, we're only gonna do one attack. That is, we're gonna attack this headquarters. Um, all the other moves we did were simply defensive to await the Soviet attack. Um, so, Soviet reaction phase, while well, that headquarters is under attack. Don't think there's really much that can be done to help it. Um, what do we have down here? Can this react? Um, let me go remind myself. Yeah, so um, only motorized units or guards, which aren't any in this scenario, can be activated by the headquarters. So there's no one that can react to save it. So we have, um, let's see, it was 12, um, I think 13, 14, 15. Let me just double check here. I think it's 14. Yeah, 14 attack strength against that guy. That's 14 to one odds. Um, the Soviets could fly an aircraft. They're gonna choose not to. Um, I suppose they'll issue an order. Um, Germans are not going to fly an aircraft. They don't have any, actually. Actually, after reading the rules, uh, I don't think it can give itself an order because you can only give orders to combat units. So we're going to go ahead and roll the die. It's max odds column of 10 to 1 because the odds are 14 to 1. Roll the 1. Um, plus 1 for the strong point. That is defender eliminated. Uh, yep. Yeah, I mean, makes sense. So... This guy is eliminated. Strong point stays. And then these guys can advance after combat. I'm making a mess here. That is the German combat phase. Now for the Axis motorized movement phase where motorized and cavalry units can move half their movement factors. Well, let's see what we can do here. I think these guys here, they're going to go 3.5. So they'll go 1, 2, 3. Yeah, I guess that's what we're going to do. And then these guys over here, they're going to go 1, 2 to cross the river and dry, 3. 
And there's another 0.5. It would be nice if they can get over here, but they can't. So they're just getting ready to attack that victory location. What else do we have over here? These motorized guys are not going to move, though. I think we got all these guys good, so that's the end of the Axis motorized movement phase. Go ahead and do the Axis engineering phase. Got to dig out my bridge repair table. So many charts. We're going to roll. Hopefully, get a high number. Got a six. Uh, not repaired. You need nine or more. Um, yeah, I should have moved an engineer up there way earlier. Okay, so that's the end of the Axis player segment. Now for the Soviet player segment, we start with the Soviet motorized movement phase. And, uh... You know, I don't know, they're, they're kind of in trouble up north with those Panzer Divisions. I don't know what we can do to prevent disaster. Um, but maybe they can try to get some step loss, enough step losses on the Germans that they can win. They need five more step losses. Uh, one thing, this is kind of stupid, but... There was an artillery that came in in the reinforcements. You can see it way up uh, there. Um, I forgot to move him, so he was just all by himself up there because the Panzers went so fast. Um, I didn't really know what to do with it. I could have tried to run it off to the side over there because it's just a sitting duck. So that's probably going to be another step loss. Um, so the Soviets need to just maybe just go an all-out attack and try to crush these guys here, or just harm them in some way. I think that's what I need to do. It needs to be a desperate attack, because next turn there's no way they're going to hold um, that victory location where the Panzers are, and if not that, there's nothing standing between that victory location and those Panzers, and I think they could probably just barely make it over there and overrun, or at least get next to it and attack. So... Um, we prepped for a big attack here, so we're going to move our motorized units and make it even bigger. Got a motorized unit in here. What's our stacking here? That's 9. This is a 1, so 10. What's our stacking here? We got 6. Um, cavalry can move half. Um, we got these guys back here. What's our stacking here? That's 8. We can put a 2 in there, so we'll go go 2 point oh no he can go 5 so 1 2 3 4 Is that up to 10 hmm too bad I didn't move these guys up oh well um I might need this guy for a spoiling attack or do I have some cavalry down here get some cavalry down here. They can go only half though. We'll, might as well move them. One. One and a half. Two. Three. Can't quite get in there, so maybe we'll just leave them here. This guy. Okay, so this stack is not fully stacked. Six. I can put 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, no. And we'll throw this guy in there, so that goes to 9. What do we have here? Artillery. Looks like the only other guy I can get in there is this armor. Let's see if there's anyone up here. Headquarters. Okay. Guess that armor is going to be sacrificial. So let's take a look here. If I'm going to attack this guy, for example, with these guys, that's fair. But if I also want to attack with these guys, then I would also have to attack this hex. 
If I want to attack with these guys, I would have to attack with these two hexes. This might be really stupid, but um, I'm just going to do a wild attack and uh, hope to inflict enough losses on the Germans. So this guy's going to go one, two, three. And his only purpose is to attack here. Um, actually, I'm not even sure if he's allowed to attack. I'd have to add up the odds. Um, I think it has to be better at least one to three odds. If it's not, I would have to split a guy off from here for the attack. This might just spoil the whole thing. So I'm not going to think through this too much. Um, yeah, so what about up here? Well, I want to kill that artillery. What can we do here? We can go... Oh wait, no, that's not motorized, not motorized. So we don't have any motorized up here. So that artillery is actually safe. Darn it. Is there any motorized over here? Nope. Yeah, so... Yep, artillery safe, so I can't pick that guy off right now. Next turn, maybe, if uh, if there is a next turn. Um, what about down here? What do we got? Try to get some more losses on the Germans. Okay, well, I guess that's the motorized movement phase for the Soviets. Now for the Soviet attack declaration phase. I was trying to decide, do I want to do an attack here? I feel it will be suicidal, there's no point. Um, each of these hexes is defense of 10. If I attack one, I have to attack the other because there are zone of controls, zones of control under here, even though the top top units do not have a zone of control. But uh, this guy can't even marshal 10, so that'd just be death. So no point in su being suicidal here. This might be suicidal, but is at least a slight chance of something happening. So we're gonna declare attacks, and I checked. This is a one to three odds attack. If I was coming from here, we're gonna attack there. We're going to attack there. Here. Hmm. Yeah, here. And I'm just trying to decide, do I want to split my attack a little bit to put overwhelming odds? Like I could take, you know, this wimpy armor guy and have him attack here. And then have everyone else attack there. Though you have to attack at least one to three odds. So just do it. Just do it. So we will fulfill some all our mandatory attacks with this. Don't think I'm going to do any other attacks. So the German reaction. So the Germans can be, um, well, actually, can I react cavalry in? Let me go see. Cavalry cannot react in. Um, there are some motorized guys down here, but uh, I don't think I need them to react in. So. Okay, so the Germans um, also can issue orders. I don't think I want to do no retreat orders. It gives me a plus one, but then if I re if there's a retreat rolled, they lose troops. So I don't want that. Um, Germans don't have any bombers. Okay, um, Soviets do though. Um, and. Yeah, let's see. German artillery. Yeah, there isn't any here. Okay, so we're going to enter the Soviet attack phase. So we'll go ahead and do this one first. It's the horrible one, sacrificial attack. So we get three attacking. Um, looks like three, six, nine. So one to three odds. Um, bonuses, I don't think there are any. Just trying to think here. Nope, nope. And I'm not going to contribute bombers or anything, so we're just doing a straight one to three. 
rolled a 9, which is really bad. 9 on a 1 to 3 is 2R. So 2 step losses to the attacker. Dead. R retreat. Well, nope. Okay. So that was intended, though. Now we'll just go up the line here. This is the next attack. Defense is 7. The attack is... 8, 9, 10, 11. We're going to have minus 1 for um, combined arms. We have an armor unit. Um, sorry, what did we say that was? 11, I think. 4, 4, yep, and 3s. 11, 11 to 7. Um, we do have some artillery available. If I threw that in, I couldn't get it up to 14 to 7, so I couldn't, I can't get it to 2 to 1. So the best I can do is a 3 to 2. Let's see, I would need 10 and a half to make that 3 to 2, yeah. So I can get 3 to 2 odds with a minus 1 die roll. So the question is, do I want to get another minus 1 on there? I think I do. I'm going to fly an SBN try to take it out. There's no German fighters, so I don't even have to worry about those shenanigans. Just roll for anti-aircraft fire. It's a 10, which I think is bad. Um, I just need to dig out my chart. Ten damaged. Um, is there a plus one? There's no headquarters. Let's see, Axis firing. Um, so yeah, it's damaged. Should have flown another one in. I have two other bombers, but I figure I'd use them on the other attacks. Okay, three to two, minus one. Oof, roll to two. Two on the three to two minus one. Let's see, minus one is two R. Wow, I should have been doing this earlier. Let me just make sure I did that right. Roll to two. Minus one, yeah, two R to the defense. So this guy is a three-stepper. So he's gonna take a step, loss, put a little marker on it. Then take another step, loss, remove the marker, and flip. And then retreat two, one, two. Germans take two more step losses on the axis step loss chart. Three more and they lose. This guy can, this sack can advance after combat. And I think they should. One reason is that they're now projecting his own control here. So maybe I should have these guys up here attack next. So I, I think the odds ratio is much worse here. And of course I had a really lucky die roll. Um, so, uh, but if I could push these guys back, advance here, then this guy would be completely isolated for the final attack from here. So I think I'll go ahead and do this attack. Our initial attack is six. Ooh, yeah, this is a big one. Um, 11, 12. By the way, I already fulfilled, I fulfilled a mandatory attack with that second attack. The first attack did not have enough odds. I think I need three to two or something like that. Um, the, so, but that second attack fulfilled a mandatory attack for the Soviets. They have one left. Um, but anyway, um, so we have six, um, 11, 12, 13. Okay, so this is going to fulfill the final mandatory attack. So 13, 2, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's 2 to 1. There's no combined arms, even though we have armor here, because there's also armor here. Two to one. Well, the Germans aren't able to do anything about it. Soviets could fly bombers in. Well, maybe we will do that. We'll, flow, we'll fly in a PE-2. Um, Anti-aircraft fire. Got a six. Six on the um, AA fire is no effect, but let's see, it was a PE2, there's no no modifiers for that. So it's in there. 
So this one is gonna be a um, minus die roll. So two to one, minus one. Rolled a nine, that's awful. Okay, so my rolls are sort of evening it out. Um, nine on two to one, minus one. No effect for anyone. It's too bad. Farmer goes to the phone box, stack these guys back up. They did their duty of soaking off an attack from the victory location. Final attack, this one. Our attackers here, I don't think it's very strong. We have four, oh, making a mess here, five, six, seven, a 9 10 yeah, it's pretty strong. Combined arms against, oh, 14. Yeah, it's tough. 14, um, still have the combined arms bonus though, because there's no armor here. So, um, 10 to 14. Um, I, I think that's a three to four, let's see. That to right, 3.5. Um, actually, I don't think it's quite there. I think I would have to have 10.5 attack, and I only have 10. So it's going to be a 1 to 2. Hopefully I did my math right there. Um, so I think we're going to attack on the 1 to 2 column. Minus 1 for combined arms. Hopefully this IL-2 will make the difference with its 2 combat air support. Artillery or anti aircraft fire. Uh, it's not going to make it. Got a seven. Uh, seven or less passes, but let's see. Axis firing on an IL 2 minus one. Oh, IL 2s are good. So um, it, does, it does succeed. Um, so this is a minus three die roll. Minus two for the IL 2 support and minus one for the combined arms. So minus three, but one to two column mods. Yeah, roll to 10. 10 on one to two. Minus three is one, two, three. Looks like we're looking at a, we're looking at a um, retreat with a star. So retreat, I know what that means. I have to go back two spaces. Star, though, let's see, it says the attacking force must lose one extra step if it attacks without attack supply. Well, this scenario just ignores that rule. It attacks a non-destroyed enemy fortification. Nope. It is making a mandated attack. Yes. So, um... Oh, and I had a combined arms bonus. So I need to look that rule up. I might actually lose a third step. Or a second. Yeah, I'm going to lose, sorry, I'm going to lose one step for mandated attack, and I might lose another step for using my combined armor's bonus. Okay, so the asterisk just means armor, an armor unit, must take the first step loss. So, and there's only one step loss, but the retreat requires a step loss. This armor unit is destroyed. And then we'll go ahead and retreat to two back to this strong point. Okay, so the Germans fought that off. Um, okay, so uh, this will probably disappoint the diehards that are watching this, but uh, it is midnight and this table must be claimed by my wife. And so we are putting it away. Uh, that means I'm ending the scenario. So a few notes about this. Um, I feel the scenario is still possible to be won by either side. So the Germans are going to make it pretty much impossible for the Soviets to get a victory condition. Those armor units up there, they're almost guaranteed to take that victory location. Um, I'm talking about the ones way up there on the next turn. The next turn is the last turn. So I think they will prevent 
the Soviets will be able to do that. But the Soviets just need to get three more step losses on the Germans. Now, they've taken a beating, though. Um, so I guess if the Germans are really careful, they can avoid it. But uh, there's that um, artillery unit, you know, lost out in the middle of nowhere. Um, I don't know. Might be, able, might be able to pull it off. And then on the last turn, I would probably do some desperate act down here, even though it's almost impossible um, to try to inflict a step loss. So um, sorry, I'm not going to finish this. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's part of the deal. I gotta give up the table every once in a while. Um, one thing about this scenario, um, I, f I never felt like I really got into it. I just didn't really know what to do. Um, part of it is, I guess I just haven't gotten to the rhythm of the game where the Soviets have to move their infantry up. Then on the next turn, the infantry get to attack because the infantry can't attack it if they're not adjacent to a unit at the start of the Soviet turn. Uh, Germans, you know, I feel like I got, they're pretty mobile, move them around, but um, it's never really, you know, because of the step loss thing, I never really felt I can use their superior firepower to do much. I made a few bad attacks down here, near the middle of the pole. I mean, this area got denuded for the Soviet offensive, but still it's probably not possible for me to capture. Probably just being too tentative. Um, anyway, this is an interesting game system, and uh, I feel like I've hit the max scenario size for my format here. Anyway, so so uh, this might will be the last of the scenarios I do for this. I uh, hope you enjoyed them, and again, I apologize for not playing this through to the bitter end. Catch you later.